Matt will be talking about the video backup system for the Amiga. Wow, here's a piece of classic software that is very classic. And so, Matt, explain to us about this strange and mysterious system that <laughs> records stuff to tape. Okay, so this system was uh, developed so that you could use any uh, video recorder like a VCR to back up your data to use as a backup drive. Because usually the tape backup drives that we would generally buy were very expensive back in the day. So this allowed you to use any, any uh, video player. So your v home VHS player could act as a, a data backup system for, for your computer. So what it would do is it would convert the uh, digital data into a visual image on the Amiga and you'd be able to record that. And then when you play it back, it has a serial device in your video connector and it would pick up on the video pulses on the tape and it would turn it back into digital data. So mm. this would plug into your serial port. So, so it's much like you know, the way the Commodore 64 had those tape drives and the Apple II had those cassette tapes. It would record sound and it would be a pulsation. You listen to it, it sounds like a modem. And then this one does it into visual data, so you can use the uh, composite video port on the back of your Amiga, even if it's black and white, it doesn't matter, it's done in black and white anyway, so your A500 or A2000 would be a, a, a machine that would work with this right out of the box. So let me uh, run the software and I'll do a demonstration of what it can do. Uh, I don't have a VCR here, so I could just say that it that's how <laughs> that's how it works in the case you, you know uh, uh, we can just pretend Matt excuse me question yes. what OS are you running this on is this 1.3 or 3.1 or what are you running this I on? believe there's two versions of the software uh, I think this uh, 1.5 works on the 1.3 and then this 3.0 works on the newer OS 2 and OS 3 oh very good so and since I got the newer ROM in here, a 3.1 ROM in here on the 3.0 version of the software. So the software comes up and it's, um, so it comes up and you've got a basic interface. You can back up a floppy or just back up files. Um, if you want to back up a floppy, you can go ahead. well, let me change the settings. I don't have the device plugged in, so i got to tell it to not check the video connection. Because otherwise it'll it'll tell me it, it couldn't read back. Because how it works is when it's plugged in, it sends a signal out on the video port and then it reads it back and then verifies that everything's connected by it. So right there, I, I disconnected it because I don't have it plugged in anything right now. So I turned the loop back off. So right now, if I go back up floppy, I'll back up DFO. And I can hit start backup. And it comes to this screen. It's waiting for me to hit record on the VCR. So as soon as I do that, I click the mouse button. It gives me the title of the, of the floppy disk and the uh, date it was recorded at. Hmm. And then it turns everything on the floppy disk <laughs> into a visual, <laughs> visual data for your VCR. So this is what's on the floppy disk in the, in the uh, visual form, the digital data. So it's almost like a, a QR code that you see <laughs> on a lot of products or a barcode, except it's, it's moving and animated and turned into digital data. So right now we're seeing the floppy disk device. Here's the data coming to it. Comes like there's four different bars. So this will work on anything that can record an NTSC signal, or and I think the European one will do. Uh, I think it also will do PAL if you have one in Europe. So this one's set up right now. It's set up for NTSC. So. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you had like uh, back in the day, so that was a whole floppy. If you had like a 40 meg hard drive. How long would it take to back up? Um, I'd have to figure that out exactly how long. I'm not totally sure. Okay, well, could it, you give us some, there's, some time there's there? There's estimates on here. I need to look them up. Um, but I think I think a whole VH, a two-hour VHS was like 380 megabytes, I think. Oh, okay. I think is what the ratio was. So it's not the fastest backup system. It does take time. Um, but it does at least label um, when you do a backup. It labels what it is, so you can see it when you play it back on your VCR. You're like, oh, this is the backup of, of this disc of this file. 
it. So you can also do a whole hard drive like what Robert was saying. So you go into this mode, hit add, and go to volume. Say I want a backup workbench. So I go to workbench, hit select. And it's going to bring up all the directories. So here's all the directories. And all this stuff. But I can include or exclude stuff. Hmm. You say don't back up this, don't back up that, but hmm. back up this. Um, you can get more uh, faster data if you have an 020 or better. Because apparently there's two speeds. If you have a 68,000 plain one, it doesn't back up as quickly. So it takes it's less data on the tape, technically. Um, so I'll hit done. I'll just back up the whole partition. So here's workbench, and I can add more if I want. I can add the work partition if I want to, or another, another drive. I'm going to hit uh, start backups. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to wait for me to hit record on the VCR. And then hit the mouse button when it's all done. It tells me what it is and the date and which drive. And then it starts turning the um, workbench partition into visual digital data for the VCR. And you can see how there's different files going by because there's these little pauses that come up. And then you see all this digital data and there's like a pause again. And I think that's the different files and then the data. Here's another file and then more data. So it goes in pieces. <coughs> so let's take a, I don't know, it's probably take five or six minutes for that partition. I think it's how long it took last time. And that's just the work partition, workbench partition, which I think is like eight megabytes, if I remember correctly, about six to eight megabytes. Generally. So, so this was a very inexpensive solution to backing up your digital data because we didn't have CD recorders, we didn't, uh, and the tape up backups for like that and the ones you would buy generally were thousands of dollars. So, this was a good solution for for someone with their media because you could um, plug in just your regular VCR and use what you already purchased. Um, it'll also work with anything else if you have a beta recorder. It'll work with that. And anything that can record an NTSC video, video signal for America or PAL in Europe. So, um, inside comes the disc, you get the manual, and then of course the, here's the serial device. And here, plugs into the serial port and then plugs these into your VCR. So, and the way um, NTSC works, um, you know, what we see is always an image, but the way it's transmitted is it's transmitted one line at a time. So it goes a line and it goes black burst, so it's a black pause and then another line and then black while the beam retracts. So to the device, it just sees a stream of, of um, black and white. And so that's what you see here in the black and white, and that becomes bits of data coming through. And, um, the beam goes by real quick as we get to uh, uh, 30 frames per second or 60 fields in the relays. I think this one is just uh, 30 frames, doesn't use the, you don't have to use the interlays. So this uh, device or this system, it would even work with uh, uh, more modern CD recorders or DVD recorders? Yeah, it'll work with that if you even record it to like uh, Elgato and put it on YouTube if I wanted to <laughs> have a, a digital backup like that someone could <laughs> go and visually look at and even download the file if there's got a, a saver oh. and you could load it back in. So it's actually a way you can get digital data and backups onto YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, here's my C64 gaming collection or my Amiga oh, yeah. gaming collection. And and people look at it yeah. and go, what <laughs> is it? Yeah, and they just see this. Oh. As long as the compression doesn't yeah. interfere like, too much with the uh, um, data coming across, as long as the bit rate's good enough or we create it enough, you should, be, you should be able to do that. So you're saying you need a 4K resolution? <laughs> no, I mean, this only data? does NTSC, which is like, you know, 720 by 480 kind of thing. I'm not even sure. I think I'm in 640 by 200 is what it's running in right now. So. I would imagine if you were going to update something like this to a modern system, yeah, you know, do it in HD because you'll get a lot more space for the digital data. 
But yeah, I thought about uh, original demo. I was going to put um, a backup on a DVD, which is kind of redundant because the DVD could hold more than the right, yeah. visual data. But at least it would demonstrate that you can save data that way. Have you taken apart that uh, connector inside? I haven't looked at it so inside. I, I haven't taken it apart. Inside. Yeah, it's probably not too complicated. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping someone would, you know, for the fun of it, recreate it. Because yeah. I, mm. I bet you the, the schematic is probably not that, right. it's probably yeah. not that detailed inside this little box. It's probably yeah. just yeah. A, few, a few components. Because so, you just got to read the pulse on the NTSC signal that it crosses. Mm. Is the only thing you've got to read. So I imagine the circuitry is simple. Yeah. So there, so. there are two RCA connectors. What are those? Are those that's composite or? Yeah, I'm not totally sure. I gotta look at the manual. Okay. I was looking at that too. Like, why is there two? There's two. Yeah. I got one for the video connection, and then there's two on here. Is that I'm audio? Sure. Uh, I'm not sure. Years back, they did have sure something that you could record just from an audio file from the view. You could use your okay. VHS deck as a as a giant cassette player basically <coughs> and because there you, you had a range from like 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz uh -huh. and it was better than a lot of the cheap audio decks so people were, were a couple people were, figured out that hey we can record our music straight to VHS tape and play it back makes me wonder oh, yeah. if that's possibly is it an audio signal or yeah I mean, it's yeah it could be I know this one's all video. I, I haven't. I, I've seen looked at the manual because I was looking at it, like, why is there a second one? Yeah. I'm not yeah. sure if it's part of the loop back. The original VCRs were all mono, so. Yeah. That would make sense. Yeah, that would make sense too. Yeah. Mm. So. Yeah. So we saw the whole workbench part. We should go by. See how it figures real quick. I'll repair it up. <laughs> Ten megabytes. So that whole duration that we just watched it back up there's 10 megabytes of data. Oh, okay. So that was not very long. Yeah, so we can kind of infer from that's how long for 10 megabytes you can infer how much data you should be able to get back and put on a, put on a recorded system. So. Are there options for compression? Yeah, there's um, it's already set. Okay. Like if you have an 020, it already, it already, it's able to get more data on the, on the tape. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, because it says that when I hit backup files or so, they all stuck. <coughs> yeah, oh, 20 fast. Maybe. Oh, okay. You switch it. Oh, 20 compressed. 68,000 standard. Oh, 20, yeah. So yeah, you can do a compressed one. Hmm. So I guess you can get even do a little quicker. I think you can do the to write it. Well, I'm glad you asked that question because I didn't even realize that the option was in there. <laughs> I hadn't even thought about it. I thought it was just the two from the. Does the uh, speed of the VCR matter? SP? Yeah, they say uh, integrity is the difference. Like if it's an SP, the quality is better, so the integrity of the backup is better, and an EP would be kind of if he, You could probably do it. I don't. I would, tried it out to see like how far can you push it. But an SP recording would be a more stable recording because the video quality goes down if you slow it down. But you can get more data if you put it in four or six hour mode. So it's entirely entirely a trade off for that. So um, there's also I was reading um, online about this. There's um, some error correction in the digital stream. Hmm. So that if there's uh, any tape dropouts or glitches, that it could generally yeah, fix itself. Huh. Yeah. So hmm. it, so there's some uh, there's some redundancy in there for for tape dropouts. Hmm. They set it up for. So how many copies can you copy onto one VHS tape if you could? Is it what? How many how many uh, floppy disks would you be able to copy onto a cassette onto a VHS? I'm not sure. I, th I think it, the amount was. I think it said 380 megabytes, but I need to. I need to look at the number. I'm not totally sure. Um, I know time-wise, I can back one up and I can take a look at it. I'll back up the file. I'm not sure if it's full. I'm gonna check real quick. It's only 50 percent full. So the 
the time that this goes by is half a flop. So. Half a flop. Yeah, it says it was 50% full, so. 400K, right? About 440K. So it's 880 first. So, so we could probably infer by how long that takes. Uh, approximately how much. It's in the manual somewhere. I was going to get the graph before I did the demo, but somebody's happy today. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's too bad they didn't do audio too, but <laughs> you could technically get even more data, or at least uh, it could track itself. At least so it could hear it. So that was, that's it. it. Mm, not bad. So yeah. So yeah, it's a nice, um, inexpensive backup system yeah, for, for your Amiga. So. There's also, like, I could show you, um, oh, here it is. Um, the Studio 16 has a tool, you know, because if you know about Vitti time code, you can put time code on the audio track. So it's, this is kind of its counterpart. Um, Oh yeah, you can hear the data go by. Here's a thing that's complicated. But it's a similar premise that um, this does it in video and that does it in audio. <laughs> so, which is a lot like what the Commodore 64 and the pet room and the tape drive and sound like that. They have that tripping time code sound, you know, audio, the digital audio. Matt, do you know the pro what the price of this uh, item was back in the day? I don't think it was that much. I think it was like 50 bucks. Oh, okay. I don't think it was that much. Because the hardware wasn't very complicated. It was just this, you know, this simple, uh, you know, just a real simple device. Right. There's not much components in there. And then, of course, the visual backup is just all software. I don't even have this plugged in and I can generate the visual data, even on this little hand that you know, it's simulating in Amiga, it's, it works just fine. Even though I've got like a plug in hand to this one, but it doesn't have a composite for it. But this will work, because the other thing I thought about for this is that if you want to do a trick to get uh, data to another computer, if you didn't have a floppy or whatever, you could plug this into one computer, and you can run this program on another, and you could technically through the composite video port on one Amiga, send data to the other Amiga if you wanted to transfer a floppy disk or... So it would be like a LAN? You could copy data over. Yeah, because if I play this on one computer, you know, say back up floppy, check off. You know, so if I run this on one Amiga, you know, I've got the composite video jack, I can plug in this, the cable into a second Amiga and do a, re a restoration and it would see the video signal on the one Amiga and just pick up the digital data. Mm. So basically you'd be doing a backup transfer from one computer to another through the video port. Even though it, it takes some time, but it can be done. Because you didn't have a null serial or anything else, you could, you could use it that way. In a pinch, you could transfer data that way. Or just for fun. <laughs> I was like, look what I can do. I can send data to the video board. <laughs> so, yeah, I thought about at home uh, making a DVD that had the data on one part on the data partition and then on the visual partition have it shown visually and <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> have it on a disc so it's on it's on the double. I can load it in to any Amiga if I want to. I could just because my 500 doesn't have a, a drive, but I can plug in this into the serial port and play the DVD. I can get data in there. So, <laughs> without having to figure out, you know, a, a floppy disk or a GoTech or anything like that. 
I could get data back and forth. Any questions, anybody, about the VBS system? How long did this system last? I mean, how long were they selling this for? For a few years or? Yeah, I think around when, I think when 2.0, or no, 1.3. Late, late when 1.3, right before 2.0 came out, I think it's when this came out. Because it has two versions of the software. So it's maybe from about 86 so. to 88, 89? Yeah. For, Somewhere around there. I could probably I could probably check the exact date. I just remember seeing it advertised. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's kind of a neat thing. I can back up all my all my floppy disks to uh, to videotape, <laughs> or and I can take it to a friend's house and restore it. If I want. <laughs> yeah, so I've done it Back then, everybody right. had a VHS player. So. Yeah, exactly. So, and I, and it was you like know, everybody had a DVD player for a while. Yeah, and so. I worried about like you know uh, you know besides making copies of your software like deluxe paint and all that stuff that you purchase maybe another floppy disk copy it's kind of nice I can make a copy onto onto a videotape if i ever if the discs ever get damaged i can mm -hmm. have another That's source to go to so. plus you can back up a whole bunch of stuff and mail it to a friend of yours so that's another yeah. thing that, you know you can send a lot of data even though they have to have some patience in restoring it but at least it's labeled, you know, you fast forward to the tape and find that disc you want, you know, because it at least labels it. So. And you can change that font too, you know, it'll be so small, you know, large if you need to, from the preferences. But, but yeah, I thought that was fascinating to be able to change digital data into a video signal. It was just very interesting to me. I wanted one back in the day, and I never, never picked one up, and then I saw one show up on eBay. So. I went, oh, I always wanted one of those. Yeah. So I purchased it and I have something to play with. <laughs> Any other questions, guys? Okay, thank you, Matt. <laughs>